hello welcome back uh, we are finishing up in Proverbs finally we looked at it all quarter so far uh, we'll be looking at the last chapter Proverbs 31 uh, Proverbs 31 is probably a familiar chapter to you when you think about uh, sermons from Mother's Day or different things like that because it's talking about a uh, virtuous woman as the King James shares but uh, we'll talk more about that in a second but uh, just want to remind you that we do have two more uh, sessions uh, from this quarter We'll be talking, looking at uh, Song of Solomon, but uh, the new books are in, so if you need a new book, uh, after August we won't have them available online anymore. Uh, just contact the church office. I'll be glad to bring one and get one to your house, whatever we need to do. Uh, we do have them already here at the office uh, as well in the church, and they're on a table beside the office. You can pick those up anytime whenever you need them. So uh, those are in. And we'll be continuing uh, today, kind of finishing up today. Uh, Proverbs 31, as we begin to look into it, uh, we've been talking about all the other Proverbs have been written by Solomon to his son or to his sons or to the, the, the Israelites, uh, to us uh, specifically, uh, as we have, have read and studied and applied it uh, for ourselves. Uh, but this is, uh, as well as chapter 30, uh, is written by someone else, but so is uh, chapter 31. It says the words, uh, verse 1, it says the words of King Lemuel, uh, an oracle that his mother taught him. We don't know much about King Lemuel. It, it may be a king that Solomon had dealings with and trade. Uh, that's, that's probably what I think, someone that he spent some time with and travels or, or things like that. We'll talk more about uh, trade and as it meant for Israel and what that, that was kind of a big deal. So, um, but this, this particular chapter, uh, from what we can understand, is not written by Solomon. So that's just uh, something to keep in mind. Either way, it, it, it has been compiled with his, all of his teachings and with his uh, sayings and wisdom uh, whenever uh, this book was compiled. Uh, and so we have it today to be able to look at it and study from it. And it's pretty neat, though. Uh, that uh, I wish we knew more about that and I haven't found anything and maybe you have and if you do know about King Lemuel I'd like for you to email me and let me know uh, what you know about him. Um, as we look we're going to begin in verse 10 uh, of chapter uh, 31 and something that of note that's pretty neat as he wrote this uh, he kind of used some poetry in this and he used an acrostic poem uh, basically uh, for every uh, for lack of better terms, for every individual saying or individual line or, or prose or verse or whatever of, not not particularly the verse as it is separated in, in as we have it in the Bible, but um, but as he wrote it, he used an acrostic poem and used uh, the first letter of the of the Hebrew alphabet as he did that, and he did it uh, sort of in the same fashion that we saw uh, a few weeks ago. Uh, a chaotic form, I believe I said that right, where the main point was in the middle and so there were some little building blocks to the main point and then after that there were more building blocks that kind of hashed out what that main point meant. And so that's what we see in this in, in chapter 31, particularly verses 10 um, through 31 uh, as he has it. Um, one of the things uh, uh, that the book says, it says, most of us go through our days and carry out our tasks without people thinking somebody may be watching us. We would be surprised if we found out that somebody had been watching us while we go through the day. Would you be even more shocked if our observer addressed how we managed our time and did the specific challenges we faced? Uh, yeah, that's kind of weird. <laughs> if we think that somebody may be watching us or if we've seen that, maybe you're at work and you um, looking over your shoulder and think somebody's just watching you, and maybe you've seen that, or you know, kids do that a lot. You know, you'll be doing something, a task, or whatever, and they're just kind of staring at you or wondering what you're doing, asking, What are you doing? Why are you doing that? Uh, and that kind of brings up that idea. Uh, maybe, maybe you've been, become aware of that, and how'd you respond to that and realize that they were doing so? And this uh, reason that this is brought up because what we're going to talk about is though someone is sitting back and watching this lady. Uh, as King Lemuel addresses her and said, this is how she acts. And, and from that, now, yes, Proverbs 31 is often 
used to, to describe a virtuous woman, a godly woman. And we're going to talk about that in that sense. But I also think that us as men can gain a lot of information from this and understand through these attitudes and through the efforts and the, and the, uh, the person of this godly woman can also be traits that we can find to be a godly man as well. So that's just something to keep in mind as we read. And we'll begin in verse 10. Of chapter 31 the ESV says this an excellent wife who can find she is far more precious than jewels now that's that's what the ESV but as King James says is who can find a virtuous woman for her price is far above rubies in that neat that's as two very uh, unique ways to describe a woman but that's the point that this verse is trying to get across a virtuous woman or an excellent wife um, it, it's the jackpot, right, men? Uh, that's what we're talking about. Um, a virtuous woman is difficult to find. A wise husband who experiences this blessing comes by having such a woman in her life considers himself to be the most fortunate. Uh, he sees her virtuous nobility in her goodness, her intelligence, her foresight, her devotion, and her resolve. Um, you, know, you see all this person, and this is a lady of... of impeccable excellence and you see that and you see this as it's more valuable than anything that you can materialistically measure it up to right uh, compared to the most precious stones anyone can find they are rare and so is she when when the comparison has been completed she's found to be worth more than the jewels like rubies diamonds pearls uh, in other words she is priceless um, uh, you think about Ruth in the Old Testament. The word there to, to describe uh, who this virtuous woman is, uh, that was also a word that described Ruth. Boaz uh, used the same Hebrew word for virtuous in his description of Ruth in Ruth 3.11. When people in the days of the Old Testament used this word to describe a man, they had in this, the mind the character trait of a valor or heroism. So uh, you, you see this same idea, if, if you were to describe this man, what would you see in this person? It would be a man of valor, it would be a man of heroism, uh, a man that, you know, that uh, uh, is way above many other people around him, not because he's taller, but because of his actions, because who he is, his, his person as a being, and it's been exemplified by what he's done um, and who he is. Ruth's reputation as a person of noble character had become known to everyone in Bethlehem who knew her. Verses 11 and 12 says, The heart of her husband trusts in her, and he would have no luck of gain. She does him good and not harm all the days of her life. So the heart of the husband trusts in her. In other words, um, when you think about this relationship between this woman and her husband, uh, because of who this woman is, the husband ha has full, complete trust in her. There's no wondering this, that. Uh, for whatever that may mean, and that's not saying uh, whether it's adultery or anything like that, but just complete confidence in her. Uh, confidence and trust in her to, to share uh, things that are going on in his life, to trust her with uh, the children, trust her with finances, to trust her with uh, anything, uh, to have confidence in her. Uh, and, and so um, one of the things that we'll see in this chapter is that Many a ways that you can describe this woman are because of the things gained by the spouse. Okay, so what I mean by that is uh, because this person is so good, other people are benefiting from it. So for us as an individual, whether we're that woman or, or a man, um, it, it's imperative to us to understand that to be a godly person means the people around us are going to be benefit from that, that they're going to reap the rewards from that, that their life is going to be better for that, for whatever that may be. Uh, ultimately, it's going to be better because that person is going to lead them to the Lord, right? Or they're already a Christian, and they're going to encourage their faith and strengthen their faith in the Lord, right? But when we think about an individual who, um, this, this lady, for instance, in saying this, that we're going to see many different things that, that will characterize uh, her walk with the Lord by what's going on in the lives of others and how it's making the lives of others better. Um, so he depends on her without any concern that she will let him down. His relationship with her gives him an excellent reason for depending on her. She consistently enriches his life in more ways than he could ever imagine. Because of her commitment to the marriage, he doesn't lack for anything. The, the Hebrew word spoil brings to mind plunder. Think about... Uh, 
especially in this time, wars and different things. And after the defeated battle, uh, the battle was over and the defeated army pretty much was in control of those who won and they would go through and just plunder and get spoils and stuff and bring all that back to their hometown, to their home country or whatever. And you know, how cool is that stuff that you didn't have? Um, you know, it, it's kind of like going to an estate sale and buying a bunch of stuff that you didn't have. Okay. Yeah. That cost you money, but when you, and it's pretty cool stuff a lot of times, but when you think about going to, uh, this and the spoils, it, it's like, all this jewelry and all these fine things that you didn't have and now they're yours you you defeated the army and you got that and that's kind of given the same illustration in this relationship that this husband had with this wife is that every day you know it's something neat new every day not only did there's satisfaction from winning the war if you think about the army and not only is there satisfaction for having the, the wife but there's there's something even more that's just uh, a constant gift, a constant renewal of excitement, and a constant renewal of, of uh, gratitude because you see the things that you gain each and every day. It's like when you take a pile of spoils where they, you know, you don't see all that, but as you dig through that, you say, oh, look at this, oh, look at this, look at this. And that's the same thing you see in this lady. That's the thing you see in this godly woman or this godly man is that they each and every day brings something new to the table. And I think that's what he's trying to say in here is that uh, so that she have no need of spoil. She would do him good and not evil all the days of her life. Uh, a godly woman, a virtuous woman, and, and again, when I say this, I'm talking about a godly individual, man as well. Um, that there's never going to be a time where this spouse is going to think that this person is going to do evil because evil is not a part of them. Uh, there's never going to be a time where they think they will bring this in into their home because that's not an issue whatsoever. And so that's what he's, um, that's what the writer here is trying to tell us is that uh, whether it's in the home or marriage, across the years that the Lord allows them to be together, she consistently brings good to their home. As long as she lives, she can be counted on to be a blessing to her husband and the family that the Lord gives them. Uh, think about our church family. Uh, who comes to mind when you think about the woman described in these verses? There's, there's many of them, right? Uh, just what they see. Uh, here in our in our church and how they work, how they serve, uh, how they encourage and lift up. We can see that just in the relationship they they have or have had with their spouse. Uh, so there's many that you can probably come to mind right now. Moving forward, we we be, begin talking. We we began. We're talking about the commitment to her husband. Now we're going to talk about being wise in her work. Uh, Proverbs 13 through 16. We'll look at these few verses. It says she seeks wool and flax and works with willing hands she is like the sheep she is like the ships of the merchant she brings her food from afar she rises while it is yet night and provides food for her household and portions for her maidens she considers a field and buys it with her fruit of her hands she plants a vineyard she dresses herself with strength and makes her arms strong i went a little bit too far on that i, I read verse 17 that's fine so being wise in her work. So that's a lot right there in, in one. We're going to break that up in a few verses. She seeks wool and flax and works willingly with her hands. So what does that mean? She seeks wool and flax. Uh, today you could say <laughs> she likes to go shopping. All right. So, but you couldn't say that back then. You, what you had to say was she seeks wool and flax, meaning she got the raw materials and, and in order to take wool and make it into threads so that you can make a garment and then sew it together. It's the same thing with flax and taking that and soaking it in water and all the time it took to get all the fine little silk uh, things out and then spin that to thread. I mean, that was just a, um, and that was a major task. That was something, there was no factories or no machines or anything like that that could do that for you. And it was all done by hand. And so um, that's why, you know, clothing was, uh, uh, unique to have and so what it's saying is is that this lady um, she makes it her time and her effort to do the tedious things to provide for her family to do something that takes a monumental task um, that may you know I mean it's it's a garment it's clothes may not seem like much to us now and it probably 
uh, wasn't a whole lot then, but I'm sure it was made well enough that those gloves probably lasted a little bit longer than some things today. Um, but she seeks that out. She she's going to look for the stuff because she, she ha she's going to get these materials. That means she's going to take the time and work and do all this stuff that takes it to the point to get to that. Um, and then verse fourteen, she is like the merchant ships. She brings her food from afar. And Solomon in his day and his time uh, for Israel, that's the way they would get a lot of things. If they didn't have the natural resources there, Solomon built a fleet of ships so that he can send them out to go and sell what they had and to go and buy and this and that. And so would also merchant ships come into uh, to, to their town, to, to Jerusalem, to other places like that, and um, bodies of water and, and those locations. Um, and you would see them come in and you're thinking, man, that ship is filled with silks and spices and oils and uh, many different things, probably utensils and tools and uh, you know, different things to be of use that they didn't have. And when they saw it coming in, like, man, this is great. We get to have these things that we, that we need, that we may have run out of, these supplies that we need. And, it, and it's using this illustration saying that she is like the merchant ship. She brings her food from afar. Uh, you know, she is a resourceful woman. She brings her food. She'll go to the, to the ends of the, her known world to make sure she provides for her family. Um, and that's what it's using this description. This woman is like, hey, you know, I want to make sure my family has the needs that they have, the stuff that we don't have that's not around us. I'm going to figure out how to do it. And whatever that, that cost it may be, I'm going to provide for my family. She rises also while it is night and give meat to her household and a portion to her maidens. You know, she, she gets up early in the morning and makes breakfast. She gets up before the daylight, you know. A uh, lazy person can sleep in because they have nothing else to do. They don't want to do anything, so why do they need to wake up early? But she's going to be up before daylight to have breakfast for her household, not just her household, not just her family, but also it's going to provide for her servants as well, right, for her maidens. And so, um, you know, probably something that she wouldn't have had to do, and whatever that may mean, she's still going to make sure that she's providing for those uh, in her, uh, those who are subjected, subject to her. Uh, so, um, when you think about this person who's, you know, Proverbs 6, six excuse me, Proverbs 6, 6 to 11, um, Solomon warned God's people to abhor laziness and embrace industry. And this woman, no, noble character, would greet the day before sunrise and she would do whatever she could do. She would uh, even provide for her servants. Providing for the needs of her family would prompt a woman of excellence to engage in profitable business ventures and so when you think about this I mean if she's taking care of all these basics she's doing what she needs to provide for her family from the point of uh, making clothes to making threads to making garments making clothes to uh, going to the whatever the, to the far ends of her known world to get food to get whatever supplies need for her family to getting up early in the morning to, to cook and provide for not only her her husband and children but her servants as well. She also considers a field and buys it. With the fruit of her hand, she plants a vineyard. So she's into real estate. I mean, she's not going and buying something that's going to be luxurious. She's not going to go spend money on something that's going to be the second, the beach home, right? No, she's going to say, well, how can we invest into some land so that we can make a vineyard out of it? And then, and then it will pay off and it helps support us as well. So she's mindful about everything that's going to, to from uh, from resources to uh, the the basic needs for the family, even to the financial things and um, economic things for for her family to provide. It's pretty neat. I mean, that's these few verses bring in a lot of different ways that the this virtuous woman, that this noble woman, this excellent wife is going to do for her family. And it's, it's, you know, when you think about women these days, you, you kind of have them characterized as um, second class or the lower in totem pole compared to men, especially when we get in the New Testament. Uh, but at this time, we see that this woman, um, she didn't let any societal norms as we still see them today to block her from, from doing what she needed to do to provide, to serve. But also, most importantly, to glorify God, to, uh, and we'll see that in just a second. So she's wise in her work. She does all these things. Um, 
she's a very prudent woman. So what are some ways that you demonstrate prudence as you make choices for your family? Uh, you know, sometimes that, that comes to where we decide we don't need the sports car, but we need the minivan, right? Uh, whatever it may be. I mean, that's a silly illustration, but, that, but in the same sense, there are things where we have to t take a look back and, and engage everything and see everything and filter everything through the lens of being wise in our choices to be, um, think about our family first and to provide for them and what's best for them. And that's this illustration that... Uh, the writer gives us here in Proverbs 31. Moving on to verse 23, we're going to see how she is sure in her reputation. Verses 23 through 27 uh, share with us, Her husband is known in the gates when he sits among the elders of the land. She makes him linen garments and sells them. She delivers sashes to the merchant. Strength and dignity are her clothing, and she laughs at the time to come. She opens her mouth with wisdom and teachings of kindness is on her tongue. She looks well to the ways of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. So, the description of the virtuous woman is excellent, a woman of excellence. It continues with an observation of another positive effect of her husband, right? You know, because of who this woman is, this man can sit at the gates of the city, a place where commerce happened, where uh, legal things went down where it's, you know, everything was, you know, on the up and up. But this is where the who's who in town would be known by what they're doing and this and that. And, of course, uh, anybody in town. Uh, and it's saying that her husband is known in the gates when he sits among the elders of the land. In other words, uh, because his house is in order, thanks to his wife, um, he is well respected. He is well known. He is... Uh, 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 what's the word I'm looking for? He is, um, say, evenly dealt with, but he is uh, wisely dealt with, I guess. He is treated fairly, fairly dealt with. I think that's the word I'm looking for. And so because of that, uh, again, his her husband is benefiting for that. Um, and so the husband of the woman and noble character would have a superb reputation there because of her. He will be considered one of the wise elders in the city whom everyone respected. Merchants made their living by buying, selling, and trading merchandise um, from many different parts of the world. And so they would have a trained eye of what looked to see this and that. You ever watched uh, the show that was, I guess it's still on, I don't know, Palm Stars and people would bring in all these different uh, merchandise and different things that they've had. Maybe it's relics, maybe it's things that passed down from family members and maybe it's something they found in a um, you know at a garage sale or a estate sale or something like that and try to see the value in it and so these guys you know if they're going to run their business they kind of had to know a little bit about everything uh, and, and some things they may have not known about and they got somebody who was more uh, trained in that or more professional in certain areas to come and look at that and place a value on that object and so what it's saying here is that because of this lady and, and making all her linens and fine things like that uh, she uh, uh, and sells them and delivers them stashes to the merchants uh, strength and dignity are her clothing she laughs at time to come she she was judged her character was judged based off of her work um, you know I I mentioned before I'm kind of getting into woodwork and you know uh, depending on how well you want to get into it it, it shows the craftsmanship is indicative of the craftsman right uh, the more you want to work you want to put into it you know some people value that many people don't um, especially furniture places now that's you know mass produced and it's used less you know cheaper material but th that's kind of this illustration of this is that she is just based off of her work and so uh, they see this out quite they could tell the difference between a value item and something worthless when they traded in the city they knew the woman of noble character by what she sold they responded uh, they respected the skill and attention the details she put into her workmanship the distinction of her work would have been reflected in the products themselves that's why they would admire her linen she made with her own hands and the girdles she offered for sale um, reflected the same level level of excellence so uh, it, it was proven she would show that who she was was proven just by her product the attire her attire consists of more than just clothing she also wears traits of strength and honor like tailored garments that fit her well 
Such noble traits proved to be an important asset to her and her family in a number of, of ways. However, the most important way comes into view in this verse. Because of her character, the future doesn't frighten her. She faces the uncertainness of time to come with stalwart determination instead of wringing her hands with anxiety as she deals with unsettling challenges that greet her. She shall rejoice about them. She has complete confidence that she can handle the struggles that will come her way. How neat is that to think that, um, you know, um, I, I, maybe it's because she's spending more time uh, taking care of her household, spending more time taking care of her children and her, her finances, her deals, and, and making her own clothes. She ain't got time to worry about politics or uh, what's going on in the world today. Uh, and man, that's, that's something we all need to be reminded. If we're, we're busy worrying about our own self, uh, we won't be swept away by many of the things that are going on. It won't be caught off guard, so to speak, either. Uh, by it. But also, we won't allow it, to, allow it to, um, to pull us away, to pull us down, to keep our focus and mind off of the things. Uh, so that when, just as in verse 20 says, says, She opens her mouth with wisdom, and the teachings of kindness is her tongue. Uh, she takes every opportunity to share God's wisdom with that. So what did we talk about was the, the beginning of, the, of wisdom was the fear of the Lord, right? And so if she can share God's wisdom, it's obvious that she can fear the Lord. In doing so, she, uh, she uses these opportunities to be a comfort to her family, comfort to her husband, a comfort to everybody that is around her. Uh, instead of wasting her days in self-indulgent luxury, she takes the initiative to manage her day wisely. Guiding others under her supervision as well as managing her own projects requires her to make the best use of her time. Therefore, eateth not the bread of idleness. Uh, that goes back to uh, verse 27. It says, She's well to the ways of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. She takes a break when it comes to caring for... She never takes a break when it comes to caring for her family or attending to other responsibilities. Her industrious approach to each day serves as a worthwhile model for believers. A commitment to work coupled with good stewardship of time helps to nourish a good reputation that speaks well to our relationship with the Lord. In turn, our reputation serves as a way to have a positive impact for others for Christ. You know, oftentimes we, we say, you know, we think that how can I let the people around me know I'm not a wordsmith. I can't just go and spout out Bible verses and lead people to the Lord. But oftentimes it's just the way we live our life is the very th tool that God uses to show people. And it's our reputation that we've made for ourselves is that would lead others to Christ. And that's exactly what it, um, well, what, what uh, the demonstration is here for this lady. So what kind of influence for the Lord does your reputation have on others? Are you leading people to God? Or is your reputation of laziness, of, of slothfulness, or don't care? Um, or is your reputation more like this Proverbs 31 lady here? And the last thing we're going to look at is uh, honor through fearing God. Verses 28 and 29 tell us, Her children rise up and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. Many women have done excellently, but you have surpassed them all. Um, that's a very familiar verse. We hear that a lot, especially Mother's Day in different ways. You know, we ought to honor a lady in our life. It says, Her children rise up and call her blessed, her husband also, and he prays her. Um, you know, this reputation, uh, she gets the reputation, gets respect from many other people in her life. But, you know, it, it's, it's her own family that makes sure people are well known of who she is, that her children rise up and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praised her. Um, with her words and actions shows that them that she considers herself to be blessed, to be their mother. When they notice that they have been the recipient of her blessing, they lavish her with praise. They know that because who she is, their life is better. And so they want to make the world know who she is and because of what she's done for them. When her wise husband observes the blessing he has been given in such a remarkable wife, he can't stop singing her praises either. He's elated that he found in her what his heart longed for in life. That's why he declares her to be the best woman in the world. She surpassed them all. Um, verse 30, it says, uh, uh, Charm is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Uh, the King James says, it says, Favor is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. So, uh, you know, we kind of live in a, 
vain world, right? Uh, especially today. Um, the honor she receives comes from the way she honors the Lord. Why everyone else may insist that favor or charm brings honor, wise believers know better. We know that charm in and of itself can be deceitful. Charm uh, or favor uh, can lead, can mislead the people who have been captivated by it. Um, you know, we can look past that. We can clearly see someone's heart uh, by who they are. Uh, not by what they say all the time. Not by uh, their reactions all the time. But, but who they are. What they do. What's, how they prove themselves to be, so to speak. Not by what they want to describe themselves, but how they prove themselves to be. Um, uh, a Christian can display authentic charm that it emanates from a sincere heart, but deceptive charm ends up hiding more than it shows. Similarly, physical beauty cannot matter most because it's vain. Even the best efforts to preserve beauty will eventually fail because it can't last forever. So charm, beauty, those things are going to go away. But who you are as a person, that's always going to be there. Uh, and, and so for, for a woman that fears the Lord, she shall be praised. For the evidence of our walk with Him, along with the way that we may be praised for the walk with Him, what matters most to us, however, is honoring Him. Last verse here, uh, verse 31 in the King James says, Give her of the fruit of her hands, and let her own works praise her in the gates. Um, a life of devotion to the Lord re renders a reputation that brings honor. Christian women who embrace the model provided in Proverbs 31 would take it to heart uh, to deserve to be honored. The fruit of affirmation can encourage her as she strives to live out the model she's embraced. Um, who she is, she's going to reap the rewards daily for it. Uh, it. It may look differently, um, but it's saying here, give the fruit of her, give Give her of the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gates. Uh, you, know, you know, in the public display of honor, you know, because she's deserved it, because she's honored it, she needs to be respected. She needs to be um, given her fruits of her reward. Um, her excellent example provides Christians with the wise path to living in a way that honors them. Um, attention needs to be brought to her, and that's what it's saying here. You know, she's deserved it. Um, and, and because of that, I think that will encourage others too. You know, oftentimes uh, we we don't want to put people on pedestals, and we don't want to, um, you know, we do for one and, and have to do for the other, and this and that. And uh, some may think they need to be awarded, and in reality, maybe they're not. You know, as uh, w living the life that they should be uh, to an extent, but. We do need to find those opportunities to honor other believers who are showing a godly life, who are leading in a godly life, whether it's a, a virtuous woman, an excellent wife, or a heroic or a man of valor, whoever that may be. How do you honor other believers who show that they live to honor the Lord? Um, you know, sometimes it's just a matter of saying, hey, thank you for walking this walk and, and leading in the way that you're doing. You, you're not even trying to be a leader, but because you're following God, you are leading others to God. Uh, and I think that's the point that they're trying to make there. And so it might be uh, we can honor them with pomp and circumstance, or we can honor them by following them. We can honor them by, hey, remind, hey, say, I look up to you, whether you realize it or not. You encourage me, uh, even though you never said a word of encouragement or, or meant to but because of the way you live in your life is an encouragement to me and maybe that's something we need to do more encourage one another I hope that uh, um, you learned a lot from the book of Proverbs uh, I know that we only skimmed through it so I hope and encourage you to go back and read especially those chapters that we haven't read go back and read over this chapter as well as it's an uh, encouragement to men and women alike uh, but we'll be looking into Song of Solomon next week just for a couple weeks. It's a short book anyway. Uh, so you go ahead and be reading that book uh, as we prepare uh, to look into it. So uh, if you are coming now with us, uh, you, I encourage you to come as you feel comfortable to for life groups. If you're not comfortable, we encourage you to stay home, okay? Um, but if you want to be here, we'd love for you to be here as well. Let me pray for you guys. Um, and I hope you have a great week. Father, I thank you so much for those who are watching. Father, I, I pray for each one that are watching, whatever needs that they ha may have. Father, I pray that you meet those needs, Father. I pray as we be encouraged from your word, whether it's a virtuous woman that is studying with this session or, or a man or whoever it may be. Father, I pray that we all be encouraged and be 
um, uh, be uh, just uh, uh, pushed to, to the limit of, of our walk, Father, that we won't be living an idle life, Father, but we'll be finding ways to serve uh, one another, to serve our family, to help our family, to serve those around us, Father, uh, those who may be subject to us, whatever it may be in our uh, business world or, or in our jobs or whatever it may be, be the Father, that we be able uh, to show great leadership to them as well. So, Father, I pray that you just uh, speak to us, Father, as we study this lesson this week. Help us to apply it this week in many different ways. Father, help us to continue to fear you uh, and in doing so gain wisdom from you as well and, and allow that uh, to, to help us in our walk, Father. Thank you for this time. Father, I just pray that you just be honored and glorified through all that we do. It's in your Son's precious holy name that we do pray. Amen. Thank you, guys. Have a great week.